Warning, this presentation contains scenes of a graphic nature. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Our modern dinosaurs, predator of the sea. Sharks have been around for approximately 420 million years, making them one of the older living fossils in existence. There are over 500 species of sharks living in the ocean today. They range in size from the size of a human's hand to over 12 meters long. Some feed on plankton, while others feed on much bigger fish, stingrays, and squid. As a predator, sharks keep a balance to our ecosystem that makes up two-thirds of our planet. They prey on the weaker species in a population which keeps them balanced. Imagine this. Without sharks, there'd be nothing to hunt the bigger fish. With the bigger fish now being at the top, they have no one to stop them from eating as much smaller fish as they want. With all of the smaller fish now scarce, algae, the smaller fish's food source, is now overrunning the oceans. One of the biggest threats to knocking our ecosystem off balance is shark finning. As defined by Bo Watt in his article Shark Finning, Damage to Global Commons, shark finning is defined as the practice of cutting off the fins and tail of a live shark and throwing its living body back into the ocean to die. They die by suffocation, starvation, or from a predator. Some places, such as Thailand, will take the whole body back because that is the only legal way to obtain shark fins. Most other boats will not do this to the fact that it is illegal. It'll be too much weight to carry back or they don't have the space on their boat. According to China Customs in 2013, this China shark meat trade profile shows that China, Spain, Singapore, and Thailand contribute to the import of shark meat. In the years 2000 to 2011, China's average annual imports of shark meat were close to almost 4,700 tons. That's 4,700,000 kilograms of meat per year. However, due to poor fishing regulation, it's nearly impossible to differentiate what portion are shark meat and what portion are shark fins. Approximately 2% of the shark is harvested during the shark finning process. The other 98% is tossed back into the ocean. According to Clark in his study, Population Trends in Pacific Oceanic Sharks and the Utility of Regulations on Shark Finning, Mako, Blue, Oceanic White Tip, Milky sharks are just a few that are being hunted specifically for their fins. Hammerheads and great whites have also been found without fins. The risk to a legally shark fin significantly outweighs the trouble they can get in. Dried shark fins go for $300 to $500 a pound. In Ichinaga's study, State Activism in the Movement to Conserve Sharks, they believe around 23 to 76 million shark fins are traded annually which is equivalent to 400 to 500 million dollars. Some sources believe it is much closer to 100 million on average, which is approximately 3.7 sharks every second. According to the Smithsonian, today some shark populations have decreased by 60 to 70% due to human shark fisheries. A study done by Worm Davis et al. called Global Catches, Exploitation Rates, and Rebuilding Options for Sharks estimated on average 100 million sharks are killed each year. In 2017, according to Florida's Museum International Shark Attack File, only five people were killed by sharks. Who was really the predator? Sharks or us? So what do they do with these fins that are so largely sought after? Shark fin soup is an infamous dish served in China. It started when emperors ate it, believing they would gain the powers of a shark and it would make them strong. Now, shark fin soup is a delicacy, a very expensive one at that. A bowl of shark fin soup can cost upwards of $100 per bowl, according to StopSharkFinning.net. There are other uses for shark fins, such as this makeup, Geolution, shark fin collagen essence, but they're not the only ones. A lot of makeup such as lipsticks and body lotions also contain byproducts of sharks. Shark fin soup and makeup aren't the only things that can contain shark. 
things such as pet food, imitation crab sticks, supplements containing shark cartilage and shark liver oil, garden fertilizer, whitefish fillets, fish patties, and more could contain hidden traces of shark that they don't promote on their packaging. Sharks are critical to both the ecosystem and to people. Without sharks being the vacuum for marine environments, diseased fish would slowly poison schools of fish and habitats. Certain species of fish would overpopulate the waters. This can cause stress on resources for a healthy living environment. If the ecosystem is affected, this in turn could affect countries or communities that rely heavily on fishing for their food or income. Sharks cannot reproduce as quickly as other fish. According to Hitake et al. in their study, Impact of Biology Knowledge on the Conservation and Management of Large Pelagic Sharks, sharks at risk of extinction because they do not reach sexual maturity as quickly, their low ability to reproduce in offspring, small litter size, and growth rate. Sharks are unable to keep up with how quickly they are being killed. According to the Smithsonian, over the course of its lifetime, a shark is estimated to be worth $1.6 million alive, versus approximately only $200 dead. This is the result of ecotourism. The diagram pictured here is from the International Journal of Conservation. This argument of ecotourism is starting to be used to help promote making shark finning illegal by showing the sustainable revenue it can create. According to Grimes and institutions in the shark fin market, India, Pakistan, Brazil, Iran, all have very loose or non-existent laws concerning shark finning. On the other hand, some countries have taken it upon themselves to create laws to help prevent shark finning. California was one to take the step to help prevent shark finning. In 1995, California state legislator made it unlawful to sell, purchase, deliver for commercial purposes, or possess on any commercial fishing vessel, any shark fin or shark tail or portion thereof that has been removed from the carcass. In 2011, California legislator found that even though all these laws were set in place, shark finning continued. California contributed to decline of shark populations. California represented 85% of the shark fin markets in the U.S. They passed a shark fin law, which made it a misdemeanor to possess, sell, trade, or distribute detached shark fins in California. This was a significant step because they can't use excuses to catching it elsewhere or getting it elsewhere. This put an end to trade in California on land. In the early 2000s, the federal government added shark finning prohibitions, also known as the Shark Conservation Act. It was amended in 2011 and made unlawful to remove the fins from a shark at sea, possess detached fins aboard fishing vessels, transfer them from one vessel to another, and land them on shore. Fishermen would have to bring sharks on shore before they could legally detach fins, but it did not prohibit shark fin importation, exportation, or consumption. The penalty for breaking the law is only a small fine. According to Grimes, New Zealand, Taiwan, and Spain all have legislation which outlaws direct finning but allows fins to be removed as long as there is corresponding body weight ratio, 5% fin to body ratio. With all this information, how can you help? Even celebrities such as Gordon Ramsay have become advocates in banning shark finning. He's traveled to other countries to see if it was really regulated and if laws were upheld. He found there were not people checking the fishermen in boats as they unloaded and they were getting away with breaking the laws. There are many organizations out there, such as this one, Team Shark Water, which was ran by the late Rob Stewart. His whole goal was to provide information on shark finning around the world. He visited over 30 different countries, put himself in risk, just to bring the truth to light. Hi. My name is Rob Stewart, and I'm a biologist, activist, and filmmaker. And I want to tell you about the biggest scandal the oceans have ever seen, one that threatens our survival on the planet and has been hidden by a billion-dollar industry until now. Although Rob has passed, his legacy lives on through his two documentaries, Sharkwater and Extinction. Check out sharkwater.com, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram for more information on how you can volunteer and get involved.